Today's video is about Data Privacy Day, this box right here next to me, data portability, and three concepts I think we should all consider before choosing services to use. You see, one of the larger celebrators of Data Privacy Day is TikTok of all people, an anti-privacy app that has literally keylogged its users to collect passwords and other personal information, now telling you about how they're making strides, I guess. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use TikTok more privately, but many people would probably just have more success not using TikTok in the first place. About six months ago, I did a review of the box, the Synology NAS, which for those who aren't familiar, is a device that lives on your home network where you store your data, then every other device connects to the NAS to access essentially everything you need. The beauty is it's self-hosted by you and the data is yours and the Synology suite aims to replace the common services you're probably aware of like Google Photos, Google Docs, iCloud, and really anything if you really want to dig into it. So similar to TikTok, you can make Google Photos better or you can just opt for something that not only allows you to actually own your data but doesn't trap you into an ecosystem. To speak to this, there's the current Apple situation in the EU where Apple is doing everything possible to prevent you from installing apps as you please, which is an option people on Android have had since essentially its entire existence. If you're stuck in the Apple ecosystem, it's going to be hard to move away when events like this happen because ultimately you have little data ownership, which locks you into that Apple ecosystem, which, hey, we do sometimes praise for doing some good things. I'm not fully against the ecosystem, but you are ultimately still, for better or for worse, in an Apple ecosystem. When you use a NAS though, it becomes your hub that any OS can connect to, which gives you more flexibility and in short, freedom. This is how everyone who needs to access our NAS back here uses a different operating system because the NAS is an independent device that's free of these ecosystems that are artificially, I guess, created by these companies. Now, what's mind blowing for me was actually stepping back to see where this relationship was happening in other areas of my workflow, not just basic stuff, um, even places I wasn't really expecting. So for example, as much as I enjoy Signal, I had the realization recently that uh, Signal can actually oftentimes be a crutch for some of the workflows I want to explore. I like to use multiple phones and Signal not allowing me to use multiple phones prevents me from exploring several of those workflows that could otherwise improve my privacy and security in other ways, not even related to my messenger. I did find alternatives like using services like Molly, which is a Signal fork on Android that actually do allow you to link a different phone to another phone that already has a Signal account on it, but this is ultimately still a workaround. So as much as I love Signal and it's still my main messenger, just my choice of using Signal instead of maybe something else does influence the devices that I choose to use and buy. And this is just a relationship that you can see in a lot of places when you stop to look. Uh, if you're using iCloud Keychain, for example, uh, your passwords, you're not gonna be able to easily access those outside of the Apple ecosystem. So you probably can't even consider Android, which shuts off that option entirely from your workflow. If all your contacts use iMessage, similarly, it's going to be pretty hard for you to switch to Android as well. If you're using Google Photos or Google Drive, you're now gonna probably think twice before using Linux because the syncing options aren't really that great. In my opinion. If you're using Authy for 2FA, you're not going to be able to easily actually migrate to something else because they actively prevent you from exporting your accounts to other platforms. All of these limitations are a big reason why I chose DaVinci Resolve to edit our content because it's supported on every major operating system, which no other major NLE can claim, even the open source ones that people love to rave about. It's a big problem. So to bring this back together, there are three concepts I think people should think about. First, pick services that naturally respect you more. On Data Privacy Day, sure you can read TikTok PR bits, <laughs> freaking great, or you can stop using TikTok. There are more privacy respecting social media platforms like Mastodon, which I've covered in its own video, uh, with give that a watch, one of the cards somewhere here. Um, second, services like the Synology NAS have been an excellent way for me to have um, more control of my data and how I interact with it, enabling countless more workflows in my life that would otherwise be restricted to an ecosystem. And this goes for really any NAS or any other service that you feel can free you from an ecosystem. So it doesn't have to be a NAS, but just try to find workflows and different things that give you more freedom and not less. And on that note, third, Think about the restrictions that are indirectly imposed by the services you choose to use. 
via their supported platforms, hardware and software requirements, data portability and your ability to move away from it, and feature set that may restrict other areas of your workflow. I know I'm not alone in changing services around over the course of several years, and if you think a little bit ahead, you can save yourself a ton of headache if you actively decide to avoid the services that purposely or even accidentally trap you and make it hard to move away from them. A great example is something like Linux, which makes it super easy to switch between Linux distros and even move back to Windows or Mac OS if you choose to. Now, all of these concepts were inspired by Synology to some extent because they reached out to see if we wanted to partner up with them for Data Privacy Day, and I felt that this was something I've been thinking about for some time now, and it's a very unique reminder on Data Privacy Day that goes away from the normal use 2FA and other tips that we'll see uh, throughout the week. So I'd really love to get your thoughts down below on any realizations you had watching this video regarding any workflows you have and how you're probably more restrictive than you might think, even when you're using good services like Signal. And lastly, go watch that original Synology NAS review to see just how powerful one of these things can be for your workflow and how it can give you a lot of freedom. See you in that video. I highly recommend watching that review and see you next time on TechLore.